In 2022, Sask Power started asking Saskatchewan residents for their input to help shape how the province is powered from 2030 and beyond. These discussions are helping inform our long-term power supply plan. We gathered input on values, priorities, and preferred power supply options, which informed the creation of multiple scenarios that show potential future power supply mixes. One of these scenarios is known as Diverse Mix 2050. It's characterized by the goal of achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 through a diverse mix of power supply options. Within this scenario, four key graphs offer insight. The first is the rate increase graph, which shows how power rates would rise compared to rates in 2023. Next is CO2 emissions, which illustrates the emissions generated in this scenario. In the bottom left is the what we will have graph, which represents the maximum electric capacity under perfect conditions. And on the bottom right, you'll find the how we will use it graph, which shows the expected energy production. Please note that not all supply options are included in this scenario. That's because this scenario represents what a diverse mix could look like using the information and data that's available to us today. The supply options that make up the other label include biomass, geothermal, flare gas, waste heat, and solar from net metering customers. We review and update our long-term supply plan about every two years as regulations, technologies, and customer expectations evolve. Now let's dive into Diverse Mix 2050. On the left, you'll see the maximum amount of power available from each source, compared to how much energy we anticipate using from each source on the right you'll see a significant drop in emissions once conventional coal units are retired in 2029 due to federal regulations. And then a smaller drop in 2035 when the last coal unit with carbon capture and storage is retired. In 2034, you'll see the first nuclear facility coming online, as well as the continuing gradual decline in overall emissions. The first natural gas plant with carbon capture and storage comes online in 2037. All the while, new wind projects continue to be added. Here we can compare the availability of natural gas on the left and how little we use it on the right. You'll notice the anticipated energy requirements line increases over time. This is due to factors like population growth and electrification like the adoption of electric vehicles. Any excess power beyond that line, we can sell to our neighbors. Over time, we end up relying on our nuclear generation capacity at a higher rate than our other options. As with all our scenarios, increasing interconnections with our neighbors will be necessary for ensuring system reliability and operability. Let's switch gears and look at our rate increase. This percentage means that if your bill is $200 a month in 2023, it would be $547 in 2050. But keep in mind that many factors influence rates, so that dollar figure is likely to change. The amount of land necessary in this scenario to build new power facilities would total about 127 quarter sections. That's nearly half the size of the city of Regina. As with any of the scenarios, there are certain challenges associated with Diverse Mix 2050. This scenario would require about 53 billion in today's dollars to realize. This would put a significant pressure on power rates. Also, this scenario most likely won't comply with recently proposed federal regulations. This would create legal risks to Sask Power and its employees. On the other hand, the scenario reduces financial, technological, and logistical risk 
while supporting SAS Power's goal of reaching net zero GHG emissions by 2050 or earlier. This is because it reduces stress on supply chains and allows more time for technologies to develop. To see how our other scenarios compare to Diverse Mix 2050, check them out at saskpower.com engage. <laughs>